Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have for you the official update to EMUI 9.0 for the Honor 10. This is TK, let's check it out. Now a few days ago I did a video for you guys showcasing the EMUI 9.0 update that we have on the P20 Pro. Now that's starting the rollout and it's in staged rollout which means not everybody's receiving it at the same time. So just be patient if you haven't received the official update but if you do want to actually get the update right away there's a process of going through Funky Huawei which I'll link for you guys in the description below. And that's how I updated both my devices even getting into the beta back in September. The process is very simple it takes you into the e-recovery they have video walkthroughs of course on how to do all of that um, and you'll be able to basically get the update right away if you'd like to wait for it just give it some time and hopefully you'll be able to receive the update before the end of the year so the first thing i want to talk to you guys is about the process i was able to get this update on my device uh, the short answer is i used the funky huawei service that i mentioned to you guys just a second ago and i went through the e-recovery method and of course updated from the beta that was released not that long ago in september and then went straight into the full version and i did not have to do a wipe so the short version is you're using the e-recovery method using funky huawei will get you updated to emui 9.0 today now, it doesn't have to be this way. If you'd like to be able to receive the update over the air as a normal OTA, the stage rollout will be starting for this very soon. And depending on your location and how the planning is on Honor side, uh, you may receive it by the end of the year or shortly after, but you will receive it hopefully for your Honor 10. The Honor 10 is definitely one of the more unique devices that came out in 2018 from Honor, mostly because of the design aesthetics in the back with the Aurora glass. Now, this is the phantom green one. Uh, you can see some of the green tones here. If I switch a little bit more, I can start seeing more bluish. If I tilt it a little bit up, you can see me, but I'm trying to show you guys some of the more purplish tones. And it does have kind of like a tri or quad color uh, setup here. And depending on how the light hits it, it'll have a different color. Overall, as far as the aesthetics, we have a 5.8 inch display IPS panel. We have 128 gigs of internal storage and we have four gigs of RAM running with the Kirin 970. Uh, no expandable storage, but we do have dual SIM slots. And then a fingerprint sensor is positioned on the bottom, as well as the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which this device does support. Uh, now, I updated the service itself last night and I've been running it again. None of my information got wiped. So if I go through here in my gallery, uh, this is one of the meals we were having here. Yeah, you can swipe up and get more information or related information. Uh, and you probably have noticed right now I'm already using gestures on there. So this is one of the first things that they did. They updated the UI. We are running EMUI 9.0. The version is 1.59. So that's the latest update that we received here. EMUI 9 over Android 9.0 running the Kira 970. 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage. An IPS 1080p panel, a November 1st security patch update, and as you know, Android Pie. Overall, the UI itself uh, does look different. Uh, we still have the Google Now feed on the left side. We have the ability of turning on the drawer. That's something that we've had in EMUI 8.0 before. Uh, now, as far as the aesthetics, we did actually have official updates now. So all of the aesthetics have been basically matched. So here, when I go into world clock, I can actually touch it, change it into basically a digital clock, or I can go back here. Um, I am using the gestures right now, and I'll show you guys what are the options that we have. Now, looking at the notification shade, you'll notice that we do have wireless display. Now, this is a little bit different than what we saw with the P20 Pro. It does project the display of this phone wirelessly to a smart TV or an enabled TV. It does not, unfortunately, have EMUI 9.0 desktop mode with that. So we're not projecting EMUI desktop. We're projecting just the display. So pretty much what you see on your phone. Um, we have also the other options here, eye comfort, hotspot, of course, screen recording, all the other options that you've normally seen, Wi-Fi as well. Looking over the settings tab, we still have the ability of accessing our Huawei ID. We have wireless networks, device connectivity, pretty standard. Home screen and wallpapers is one of the new things where they organize or categorize all the customizations into one section. And you can go in there and customize them, download additional wallpapers or even magazines as well as themes. Under the display, we have the uh, temperature settings as far as eye comfort and of course, text size and resolution. You have the ability of using the smart resolution, which jumps between 720p and 1080p to save you some power. Uh, now this is running an IPS panel, not an OLED panel and a 3400 milliamp battery. So this definitely can help you extend the life of your battery. And we have the ability of customizing it by hiding the notch or the full, the full screen display so that you can customize the apps there. And of course, some additional options for screensaver and status bar. The sound tab is pretty standard, nothing really big. You can customize the media, the sound, the volume, and then under more, you can customize the additional one for screenshots, screen touch, and of course, all the additional vibration options. Very nice, very concise. 
Notifications, pretty simple. You can customize your notification and icon badges as well as lock screen notifications. So you can say if you want to show them or if you want to hide them. Now under apps, we have the ability of looking into what we have installed on our system, permissions, the default apps where you'd be able to customize even down to the launcher setting. Now for me, I like to use Nova Launcher and I do use it. Uh, for this video, I did actually switch over and just to show you guys what it kind of looks like without it. So here's my Nova Launcher configuration. I have gestures, all of the stuff is working great. Uh, but overall, you are able to change your launcher and you are able to also just select whichever one you want. If you want to stick with the drawer home, go into that and then keep using it. And you can customize all the additional other applications default functionality. Last but not least, AppTwin is installed and it's not turned on for me, but you are able to turn it on to log into multiple accounts to the installed services. It does support WeChat as well as WhatsApp, but you have to have them installed for them to show up in there. The 3400 million battery option here is pretty standard, optimized battery use. We have performance modes, of course, app launch, battery usage, power consumption detail, and battery consensus. If you want to be able to add that in there, I have that on there. And of course, under more, you'll be able to see the consumption and as far as the intensive history. So you can see history information for storage, pretty much what you'd expect. You can go in there and see how much you have left out of the 128. This is what I have. Now, digital balance is finally here. This is the Huawei or Honor version of digital well-being that we've seen. And of course, this kind of helps you manage how much time you're spending on your device. I don't have a lot of data on this yet as I just installed this update last night, but overall, usually what this will provide you is more information as far as your usage. So if you use the device, it'll tell you like you spent so many hours in this app, this app, this app, you've turned on the, the your phone so many times. This is so that it gives you more information to be aware of how your usage is being done. Last but not least, we have security and privacy, which we'll be able to set up our fingerprint ID and face recognition, of course, and our pin. So it does have face unlock as well as it has fingerprint unlock. So we have that in here. And I disabled the fingerprint gestures, which is what I was using before with EMUI 8.2. App lock, private space, and file safe are also all here. Next, we have the Google account as well as the just user accounts. So that's pretty much the normal settings. Under system, we have about phone, which is what we covered already, and then system navigation where it gets really nice. So you'll notice now we have a lot of options for system navigation. Now we have the gestures, which is what I'm using right now. And you'll notice right there, it basically disables the functionality of using the home button here. So I can't use this to go home, but what it gives me is the ability of using it to basically swipe up to go home, which I didn't really want to do that. And let's go back in here. And of course, you can, it shows you the different functionality, swiping up. And then, of course, we can still launch the assistant by going on the right side. I'm not going to use it right now. Let's go back in. And you can jump between that and, of course, off-screen navigation, which uses the fingerprint sensor, the single key navigation, which gives a little pill at the bottom here, and, of course, the traditional three key option, which is what we've seen in the past. And you can customize the order. The last but not least is a navigation dock, which gives us a little button that kind of jumps in the middle of the screen and you can use that to navigate. It makes it a little bit easier, but uh, for me, because this is a 5.8 inch display, it's not that big. I'm actually able to reach it very nicely. So I really like the configuration that we have here and I'm definitely happy that we have gestures. Language and input, date and time, phone clone, obviously to be able to transfer your information from your old phone to your new phone, backup and restore, developer options and all the good options here. Now, as far as the camera, we definitely have the same aesthetical uh, updates that we saw with the beta. So we have aperture mode, portrait mode, photo mode, video mode, AR, more. And of course, you can download an additional options here, but we have like pro, slow-mo, night mode, panorama, monochrome, lighting, and of course, HDR. Uh, the main difference though is when we go into HDR, so let's go ahead and go into the image itself, it only uses HDR on the back camera. So the front camera does not have HDR. Um, I know that with the Mate 20 Pro, we did get HDR with the MUI 9, but that's just how the device came out. So if you go into the front facing camera, uh, for the most part, we'll jump into either portrait, or you can go in there and go straight into the settings and be able to take a standard picture and turn on live picture. Uh, but AI, for the most part, it's well focused on the back camera here. And of course, we can go in there and look at the different options and settings. All of those things are, for the most part, the same thing. Uh, and of course, this is still one of my favorite devices as far as performance. Let's go home, go into the gallery. Uh, I did. I was in Berlin not that long ago and I used this and it just looks amazing at night. Uh, obviously, you know, there's some food shots there. Uh, <laughs> me being crazy just trying to go really really cute there uh, but overall very nice i love the device i love the fact that it has good night shots it has good features and of course now it has emui 9.0 this is a stage rollout so just if you haven't received the update yet just be patient and you should be receiving it soon uh, if you don't want to wait and you would like to check out the funky wabi service check out the link in the description below they'll be able to help you out i am not affiliated with them this is just more of the way i did it to get the emui 9.0 the official build on my honor 10. Uh, like and subscribe as usual let me know what you guys think in the comments below thank you very much for the support and i'll see you guys in the next video